especially uh, the soul winning that we've been doing in the last several days, for some reason, we were soul winning in Phoenix. We were just in a neighborhood that was inundated with Jehovah's Witnesses. And then today, we were down in Gila Bend, and we were just in the Jehovah's Witness part of Gila Bend or something. We are running into all these Jehovah's Witnesses. You're not going to believe this, Stucky. You thought I was going to forget to tell them. I caught him riding in the back of the truck of a Jehovah's Witness today. I, I, I mean, I was mad. I was angry. Now, it turned out it was a misunderstanding. But here, here we are soul winning, and I'll read the scripture and I'll tell you the story. But it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. Notice that. His name is Counselor. Do you see that? Counselor, the mighty God. So who is the Son? According to Isaiah, Isaiah, the Son is the mighty God. Do you see that? And he says, the everlasting Father. Because there only is one. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Amen. Learn it. Ephesians 4. There is only but one God. There is no Savior beside me, Jehovah said in Isaiah 43. He said, beside me there is none else. He said, beside me there is no God. I am He and there is none else. Jesus Christ said, if you do not believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And here it says, the Son is called the mighty God. The Everlasting Father. Now, the New World Translation, the Jehovah's Witness Bible, changes many references to the deity of Christ. It does not change this reference. So even in their own Bible, this scripture is not tampered with. It says the exact same thing in their Bible. And so I'm constantly showing this to, I want a Jehovah's Witness to Christ today. And I'll get to that in my story in a second. It says, uh, you know, the Prince of Peace. Now, today, down in the Yule Bend, you know, we're out soul winning, and... Uh, as we're going soul winning, I notice this truck is driving by and it, it keeps on kind of slowing down, looking at me, and it passed me like five or six times, an unnatural amount of times. I kind of look at what I'm doing. I just ignore them. One guy was wearing a tie, the other guy was wearing work clothes, and they just kind of were looking at me funny and everything driving around. Well, I'm going soul winning and uh, I knock on the door of this lady, she was a Hispanic lady, and she was a Jehovah's Witness. So I began to go into the gospel with her, you know, and, and let me give you some tips right now for how to win it, because I've wanted the Lord, and I've won several Jehovah's Witnesses. So I've had some of them baptized and, and in church and everything, and let me give you some tips right now how to win a Jehovah's Witness to the Lord. First of all, you don't want to get off on all of their little tangents that they're going to try to get you off on arguing about this, arguing about that. You want to keep it on the gospel to start with, because let me tell you something. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. So the gospel is the power of the God, okay, of, of salvation. We're talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're talking about believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no man shall pluck them out of my hand. These elements of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the free gift of salvation, that's a powerful message. That's what you want to preach to people. Don't let Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists get you off on these other rabbit trails. That's not where the power is in regard to salvation. And so the first thing is you've got to keep them focused on salvation. So let me give you some ways to do that. I always ask at the door, you know, if you died today, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? I don't ask that when they're a Jehovah's Witness. I say this, if you, die, if you were to die today, do you know that you're saved? Do you know you have eternal life? Because as soon as you bring up heaven, well, I don't, you know, I don't believe anybody goes to heaven. And they get you off on some discussion about the 144,000, and you're going nowhere, right? So I'll get to that later in the conversation about heaven. But at this point, I'm just trying to present the gospel. So I just say, do you know that you're saved? Do you know you have eternal life? And then usually they're going to say, well, I don't know, or I hope so, or nobody can know that. You, they're not going to get you... Usually a firm answer, yes, I know I'm saved. Usually it's, well, you know, I hope so, or I'm trying. Well, then you say, well, hey, can I show you some scriptures out of the Bible that tell you how you can know for sure? A lot of times they'll let you show them. And so, you know, then I begin to just go through the plan of salvation. We've all sinned. I show them hell in, in the book of Revelation. A good scripture to turn to sometimes is Revelation 14, 10, and 11, proving that hell is a place where people are actually punished eternally 
because Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that. They don't believe in a hell that where people are punished. So I, I you know, I, I touch on that, but again, I don't want to get off on that too far either, because that could lead to another, you know, argument that I'm trying to avoid at this point in the conversation. Then I go over and, and show them the typical, you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross. I go through uh, the death, burial, and resurrection. I go through the fact that it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved. I'm emphasizing that it's all by faith. It's eternal life. You can't lose your salvation. I go into all that message and explain that, okay? So now I've gotten through the most important part without being shut down by some kind of an argument. I got through the part about how it's a free gift, it's salvation. Now it's here where I start to attack some of their false doctrine, okay? After I've gotten that powerful message across, because let's face it, the Jehovah's Witnesses, boy, they believe very strongly about the fact that Jesus is not God. And they believe very strongly that there's, uh, you know, that nobody's going to heaven except these certain people. But they're really... I like the way you put it. They're wishy-washy when it comes to the plan of salvation. And so they'll listen. They'll hear you out. You know, they'll listen to you about the fact that it's all faith and not works. So once you get that across to them, then when you get on the subject of eternal life, that's where I take them to John chapter 11. Okay, and I show them uh, Jesus is coming and he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And of course, famous scriptures in John 11 where he, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And watch, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now the Jehovah's Witness, the answer is no. Because they believe that everyone will die. They believe every single person is going to die and lay in the grave. And if you were a good enough Jehovah's Witness, you'll be resurrected one day. But they believe in Christians or non-Christians being dead in the grave for hundreds, thousands, years, whatever. And so I show them that the Bible says you'll never die. You have eternal life. And I tell them, the moment I breathe my last breath, the flesh will die. But I will continue to live on in heaven. Jesus died and was he was in hell for three days, three nights. That's dead. Being in heaven, you're alive with Jesus Christ. God's not the God of the, of the dead, but of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive right now in heaven, according to Jesus Christ. And so I show them that. Then I have to, of course, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm homing in on the gospel. Then I show them the fact that, uh, what do I, what do I show them there? I show them the fact that Jesus is God. You know, now that I've gotten all my main points out there, now I need to make sure they understand Jesus is God. I take them somewhere like Isaiah 9.6. It's is a great place. Hebrews 1.8 is another great place. 1 Timothy 3.16, another great scripture. They want you to go to John 1 because then they get in some big argument. They only have a few little arguments memorized. As long as you avoid those, they have nothing to say. So you avoid John 1. You avoid 1 John 5, 7. You just go to the, all the other scriptures that prove Jesus is God. Then I take them to my favorite one to prove them wrong. And I, you know, for some reason, the, the reference is slipping my mind. I believe it's in Mark chapter 10. And this is by far my favorite. Uh, once I've shown them those three that I, that I just named to you, Isaiah 9, 6... Hebrews 1. And I mean, hey, I'm saying, I, I want to Jehovah's Witness the Lord using this method today. This is how I did it. Okay. So, I believe it's Mark chapter 10. Maybe somebody help me out. The rich young ruler. Oh, here we go. I got it. I take them here. This is the fourth one that I showed them to prove that Jesus is God. After I've already showed them Hebrews 1.8, but unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. After I've shown them Isaiah 9, 6, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, is, is the name of the Son. After I show him 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of God is, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, preached unto angels, believed on the world, received up in the glory. I show him that. But in Mark chapter 10 here, I show him this one where it says, in verse 17, Mark 10, 17, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? You say, why do you show them this one? Because this is one that they're taught in their church to prove that Jesus is not God. So when you turn them, this around on them, it'll show how, them how corrupt and phony their church and their teaching is. So I show them this. He said, good master, what, good, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to them, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. And they're like, oh, well, see, he's not God. And I always say this, was well, Jesus good? Oh, yeah, he's good. Well, then he's God. Because there's only one that's good, and it's God. I said, I'm not good, you're not good, he's not good. There is none that doeth good, no, not one, the Bible says. And Jesus was quick to say, why callest thou me good? 
There is none good but one. That's God. There is only one that's good, and it's God. So either Jesus Christ is a sinful human being, or he's God in the flesh. Because if he was a sinful human being, then he'd say, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not good. I'm a sinner. So does the Jehovah's Witness believe that Jesus is a sinner? A sinful man? So they must realize the fact that this only proves the deity of Christ. And so then once they believe that Jesus Christ is God and that it's by grace through faith and that you can't lose it, you know, then they're ready to receive Christ as Savior and to trust Him alone, believe on Him. And then, you know, I don't always go into this, but today I showed the lady that I talked to, on a side note, I said, look, and, you know, I showed her what I was preaching about Sunday night, Philippians 1, you know, about how Paul said to depart from the body is to be present with the Lord, you know, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. So I proved to her that you will go to heaven if you're a believer. And I guess I did already, I guess I do already go into that with them when I'm talking about the eternal life and never die and all that. And so that's just a rundown, of, you know, I'm, and I'm kind of blowing through fast because I have a whole message to preach tonight, but I just wanted to give you that rundown because that's a, that's a way to win Jehovah's Witnesses to the Lord, Jehovah's false witnesses. So I get done winning her to Christ. I go down the street and I'm knocking doors, knocking doors. I get to this other door. There's a 78 year old man, and and he had uh, he's almost died three times, but he got saved today. So that was great. He was a Catholic, and he was very receptive. I guess I guess you would be if that was your condition, but he was very interested. So he got saved, praise God. And uh, then I'm I'm going down the street. All of a sudden, this truck pulls up. And stuck, he's in the back of the truck. Oh, I, I left something out of the story, sorry. I walk around the block because I'm trying to find Stucky because I was done with my portion of the neighborhood, so I'm, I'm trying to find him. So I go around the corner and I see this white station wagon pulls up to the house of the lady that I wanted the Lord like over an hour ago. And these two ladies come out in skirts and they're getting in this big argument with her. They were her Jehovah's Witness church coming and trying to you know straighten her out or do some damage control so the question is how did they know that i just been there well because remember the guy earlier that i told you that was going around the truck watching me seeing what i was doing so man they put an all all points bulletin or something you know, they're trying to go around and do damage control for the people that we're talking to so they're over there like trying to they're waving their hands and trying to show her stuff and She's like, well, you know, like you're wrong or whatever. I didn't. I wish I could have heard the conversation, but I didn't. But they're trying to straighten her out and indoctrinate her. And but thank God, the Holy Spirit now lives inside of her, and so uh, she'll be led into all truth by the Holy Ghost Himself. So then this truck pulls up. Stucky's in the back of the truck with all his witnesses. He's like, and, and he expected me to hop in. I'm like, what are you doing? I told him, I said, you're running with the devil. I said, what are you doing? And he's like, huh? What are you talking about? I said, why are you riding in the back of the devil? And now I said, I said, why are you riding in the back of the devil's truck? And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, these are Jehovah's Witnesses. He's like, oh man, I didn't know that. So he, he, hopped, he hopped out of the back of the truck. You know, he thought they were just being nice, giving him a ride. So he hopped out of the truck. I said, you're going to walk with me. Don't ride in the truck.